Hello, I'm Moira Alderson with the BBC News. The world's richest man, Elon Musk, has clinched a deal to buy Twitter for $44 billion. In a joint statement, the two sides said they wanted to make the social media platform better than ever and stressed the importance of free speech. Twitter had initially rejected Mr Musk's advances. Its board has now recommended the sale to its shareholders. James Clayton in San Francisco has the details. This is huge news. Elon Musk will own Twitter. And that doesn't just mean that he owns a bit of Twitter. He is the indisputable king of Twitter. Now, he can do whatever he wants. He can decide who's the chief executive. He could even decide he, that he'll run Twitter if he wanted to. So this is absolutely huge news, not just for Twitter, but social media platforms across the world too. And I think huge ramifications now for how Twitter is moderated. I mean, is Donald Trump going to be allowed back onto Twitter, for example? I suspect he will, because all of the mood music from Elon Musk says that he is pro-free speech and he doesn't want people to be banned from Twitter. The businessman and philanthropist Osman Kavala has been sentenced to life in prison without parole in Turkey. After being found guilty of attempting to overthrow the government, rights groups have condemned it as a travesty of justice. Grant Ferret reports. The judges in Istanbul took only an hour to reach their guilty verdict for Osman Kavala and seven other defendants. The rulings were met with shouts and boos in the packed courtroom. Mr Kavala described himself as the victim of a judicial assassination. He's already been behind bars for four and a half years. He was immediately rearrested after a previous case against him was thrown out two years ago. Last October, the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, threatened to expel a group of diplomats, including those from France, Germany and the United States, when they appealed for his urgent release. A proposed humanitarian corridor in Ukraine to evacuate civilians caught in the siege at the steelworks in the city of Mariupol has failed. Ukraine said it had not been involved in discussions to set it up. A Ukrainian deputy prime minister, Irina Vereshchuk, said that a corridor announced unilaterally by the Russians did not provide security. Here's Mark Lowen. In eastern Ukraine, there is no sign of Moscow's military capability dipping. The Ukrainian government said Russian forces were still attacking the besieged Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol by air and by tank, denying reports from Moscow that a humanitarian corridor had been agreed for civilians sheltering there. Ceasefires and evacuations can only happen with trust, and between these two sides, there is still none. Russian state media are reporting several explosions at the state security ministry in the capital of Moldova's pro-Russian breakaway region of Transnistria. The territory lies on the western border of Ukraine. BBC News. A judge in New York has found Donald Trump in contempt of court for failing to provide documents demanded as part of an investigation into his business empire. The former US president has been ordered to pay a fine of $10,000 a day until he complies. Mr Trump's lawyer said he didn't have the documents being sought. Neda Taufik reports from New York. Before holding Mr. Trump in contempt, the New York judge told him, I know you take your business seriously, and I take mine seriously. The state attorney general's office accused Donald Trump of thumbing his nose at the court and asked for the contempt finding after he failed to meet an order deadline to turn over materials. Investigators want information from three of his mobile devices, along with files located in cabinets outside Mr. Trump's office, storage room and other locations in the Trump organization. The medical charity Médecins Sans Frontières says three people were killed inside a hospital in the Sudanese region of Darfur during violence over the weekend. The UN has called for an investigation into the clashes between two rival communities, which reportedly left more than 160 people dead. The Jordanian authorities have temporarily closed schools in the south of the kingdom due to a severe sandstorm. The University of Jordan in the capital, Amman, has also closed its doors, citing a risk to people with respiratory problems. A capsule carrying three businessmen and a former NASA astronaut who took part in a landmark commercial space mission has splashed down in the Atlantic. The SpaceX Dragon capsule hurtled towards Earth at 28,000 kilometres an hour before its final descent off Florida was slowed by four huge parachutes. Each of the businessmen is thought to have paid more than $50 million for their trip to the International Space Station. During their mission, they carried out a series of scientific experiments. BBC News.